Hi, everybody, and welcome to my show, Rhythm of Healing, where we speak about music, medicine, life, and so much more. And we are so honored to have so many amazing guests on our show. We get to learn so much about different people and what they do and what they're all about. So today, I'm very, very excited to introduce my guest. My guest today is Dr. Ami Buxi. Dr. Buxi is a psychiatrist based in New York City who focuses on mental health for women. She's also the director of ambulatory services and the director of medical education at Lenox Hill Hospital in the Northwell Health System in New York City. And if that's not enough, she also serves as the president of the Young Physicians Section of API, the American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin. That's a lot. We have a very, very talented woman here with us today. Welcome, Dr. Ami Bakshi. Thank you so much for having me today, Viva. Thank We're so you. excited to be here today. We are so happy to have you. And, um, you know, for our guests, uh, obviously, uh, you know, being a physician, being a doctor and, uh, you know, focusing on mental health is so important. Of course, I can relate. Um, <laughs> And you know, I'm really glad. Thank you so much. So, so the viewers know, uh, you know, I just want to tell you that a psychiatrist is what they do, and what they do, and what you know, what things are necessary in psychiatry. Which. So, I'm really happy that Dr. Baxi is here, and she's going to, you know, tell us all about that. So, um, Dr. Baxi, tell us in your own words, what is a psychiatrist for our viewers? So, it's a great question. So, a psychiatrist is a doctor, been to medical school, and we specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of mental health issues. So we focus on mental illness, but we also focus on maintaining a healthy lifestyle and preventing illness, taking care of yourself and getting help um, when it's sometimes difficult. What kind of issues do you deal with? So we deal with things all across the spectrum. So we, all the way from depression, anxiety, um, all the way to substance use, psychotic illnesses. Um, and what, I, what I'm most passionate about is women's mental health. Um, so anything re related to reproductive psychiatry, um, anything related to, you know, a female, a female's perspective of mental illness. Interesting. Um, yeah. You know, when you say you also mentioned like substance abuse, so you're talking about drug use, like, you know, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, et cetera, right? Exactly. Yeah, so I think alcohol is probably the thing that we see most commonly, um, especially in our culture, but we also see heroin, we see cocaine, yeah. we see marijuana, we see it all. We see it all. And right. I think um, so the viewers know that it's very important that it's not just in our culture, which is very important in our culture, where you know, kids are using drugs and parents don't understand what's happening to them, right? And I often see that, you know, parents are embarrassed to get the help because they're of the stigma, you know? Stigma is one of the probably biggest hurdles that our culture has to overcome to help our, our society. Right. People, whether it's substance use, whether it's, you know, drinking too much or whether it's a true mental illness, whether it's depression, anxiety, something that's really impacting our family's well-being. Um, and that's where, you know, we all come into play. That's where you and I come into play, right? right? We really need to increase awareness. And I mean, you're doing such an excellent job oh, just by doing this talk right. show. It's so helpful to get the word out there in our society. Right. Culture, our culture, you know, looks frowns upon it still. Yeah. And yeah. it's so important for us to keep talking about it and exposing people to yes. it. Yes. I mean, how many times have you heard, like, you know, uh, someone in the family is depressed and... Oh, tell them that puja karan ja ke, ya, go out with your friends or go exercise. Like, you don't need medication. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Just get up. Do it, you know? Um, Just get up. The, those are the words that we hear most common. The number of times I've gotten phone calls, you know, they don't want to come see me in the office. They just want to, you know, don't tell anybody, but... You know, my son is really having this problem or, you know, my wife just can't leave the house. Right. Well, let's address it. Right. Right. And, and we can. Like, we can treat this. And I feel like what's important is um, some jana, like logon ko samjana ke it's not just, you know, depression is a medical problem. It's not, you know, it's just, oh, they're depressed or, oh, they're anxious. I mean, anxiety, depression, all these things are 
Like, would you not take your high blood, like medication for blood pressure? You would. I you would take your medication for diabetes. So why not for mental illness? Exactly. No, I, I, I literally use that exact same example. It's like diabetes. It's <sighs> like high blood pressure. It's, ti it's time to acknowledge that. It's like a medical condition and it's Sometimes you just need medication to help you feel better. You wouldn't stop your blood pressure medication. You shouldn't stop your depression medication. Right, right. So I think um, those are some ways that we can create awareness. What else, um, how else are you breaking the, you know, the silence on mental illness? Like, what have you been doing? I know you're doing a lot, so. <laughs> well, I think one of the other things that we're really, it's important is educating the next generation as well. So that's a big part of it, training and educating others so that it becomes part of the norm. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, like, I'm just not feeling up for it. Not because I have a stomach ache, because I'm just feeling sad and I don't want to get out of the house today. And that's okay to say. Um, a big part of, and you, you mentioned this earlier, so I serve as the president of the Young yes. Physician section of API. And that's a big part of it. It's advocacy, outreach, education spreading the word to others, right? So people understand what we're dealing with. So that's a, another very important thing. A lot of Saudi viewers know that API is one of the biggest organizations in the United States. Jo sub Saudi Desi doctors us organization to join ne are ode which bohat sare programs, events, um, lots of amazing things happen on there. So uh, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, Dr. Baxi, tell us how you did the conference this year? Oh, I so we have an annual winter medical conference that we host. And this year we did it virtually. You know, we had, it, during a pandemic, we didn't have much of a choice, right? And surprisingly, we had record registration, record attendance at this conference um, because it was a little bit more convenient, right? And people were so excited. We had world-renowned CME speakers. We had a networking mixer hosted by comedian Rajiv Satyal. Wow. We had, yeah, it, it was incredible. We had, you know, a lot of activities. We had ex Bollywood classes hosted by Atma. We had incredible nighttime events. In fact, our very own Dr. Biba Singh Woo. performed virtually for us. Yes, uh, I did a virtual stopped. concert. It was, it was so much fun. It was incredible. People loved you. You're so talented. Thank you. Uh, not a surprise. But, Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was, no, really it was nice. an incredible conference. And you were amazing, of course, as always. Thank you. Thank you. I actually really enjoyed it, too. And especially because, you know, to perform for your own uh, profession is really special, you know, because people yeah. see me, you know, as, as a physician, as a psychiatrist, but like, then coming and singing Bollywood music, it was kind of fun, you know? So. No, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. It's being around our own people. People under, you know, people also value what you're doing a little bit more knowing how much, you know, you've sacrificed to already get, become a doctor. And then on top of that, to add on this singing passion that you have, it's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, about the conference, I mean, there were some other stuff too, like the the. I love the dance classes. Those were really fun, you know, and um, people were joining in from everywhere. Yeah, we were very lucky. We had um, just registrants, but we also had participants, like the, the teachers were from all over, right? We had our educators from all over the world. We had um, the dance classes. We can get specialists. We can get experts in all of these fields when you're virtual, right? Wow. So we had people from India, we had students coming from India um, so they could present research posters for us. Nice. We had, you know, we had a lot of educational seminars for, for trainees, for international medical school graduates who wanted to come to America. We could have, you know, these continuing medical education lecture series for people again from all over. Um, and, and then again, the entertainment, which is always an important part of people keeping people together, right? Yes. It's so important. Definitely. Um, so no, Food and entertainment. Exactly. <laughs> right? We even brought in a sponsored lunch, actually. We sent people oh, nice. Grubhub money or DoorDash or whatever. It was. That's awesome. I um, <laughs> so, want to know, how has your experience been uh, throughout the pandemic with mental illness, depression, anxiety, and telehealth? Tell me about your you know, experience. You know, the pandemic 
really made it difficult for a lot of people. So early on um, in the spring, I, I'm based in New York City, so in the spring it hit us the worst. And all of a sudden the need for mental health went out. We were so confused, it didn't make sense. But we realized that all of the providers, everybody was so focused on taking care of the sickest of the sick, right? Our hospitals were overflowing yes. to the streets, literally. We realized there, there's no time to take care of our own mental health. And just as this started to wane and we started to see a little bit of an improvement, we all of a sudden had a surge of yes. the frontline providers. We had all of those, you know, the, the nurses, the doctors, the techs, everybody who was there working so hard. We had all of them now surging and to the point where we couldn't keep up with the demand because everybody's feeling burnt out. People yes. are experiencing, you know, the overwhelming stress from taking care of patients, right. from the social isolation, from the fear of bringing this illness, this unknown illness home to your family. And then, of course, there's this community who's also feeling it, right? Yeah. They're all stuck at home. They're all, especially those with pre-existing mental illness, seeing further exacerbations, right? These are the people who are drinking more. Right. They're the people who are not able to socialize with others. They're stuck home alone, potentially, yeah. right? We saw so much of that, and it's only getting worse because now it's coming up, this tra trauma that people have experienced yeah. is finally coming to the forefront. So, I mean, what we've been doing, I think the best thing to prevent the illness or prevent exacerbation of an illness, is come out, seek help. Yeah. You know, we're providing the support. Sometimes it's just talk therapy that people need. Right. And other times maybe it's more, but seek the treatment out because now's the time. Yes. And, and it is hard. I agree because, uh, you know, when the pandemic started, like, I have seen my practice, which I patients I and like, um, you know, so many new patients. And there's so much more to talk about after a quick break, Dr. Roxy, we'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. We were talking to Dr. Ami Baxi and Dr. Baxi was sharing to, uh, with us about mental health and the pandemic and um, telehealth. So Ami, uh, continue to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we've been seeing patients from all over because of this increased need. And in psychiatry, we have this real luxury where we can see patients from all over via remote technology. So we're seeing patients on our computers. People are logging in from their phones from home so that they don't have to go out there and expose themselves. They don't have to worry about conflicts in appointments. They don't have to worry about leaving their children home because so many kids are home right now, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. been um, it's this incredible blessing that we've had to the ability to use telemedicine and see our patients. So more the reason why if anybody needs the help, now's the time exactly. because your doctor can see you with your phone. <laughs> Exactly. You just have to set up an appointment and they can see you on any virtual platform, which is amazing, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, exactly. I think it's great. I, we want to talk about more about you, Dr. Buxi. Um, and I want to mention that I have a particular connection and admiration uh, because I know your father, Dr. Shreyas Baxi, who is a, a mentor, a guide, amazing human being, and, you know, a like a father figure to me as well. And, um, you know, what's amazing is that to see a good psychiatrist, your dad is a psychiatrist, and your sister is a psychiatrist, Dr. Harita Baxi. Uh, actually, Harita Raja, because she's married right now. <laughs> yes, um, yes, she's a Raja. So three psychiatrists in the family. Amazing. I can relate a little bit because my dad's a psychiatrist and my sister's a social worker. But three psychiatrists in the family, how did that happen? <laughs> It's a great question. We actually met through my dad, actually, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yes, no, we, yes. Right? Um, my dad, being a psychiatrist, as you know, probably played a role. I still don't know directly how much of a role, but I'm sure it played some role in both me and Harita becoming a psychiatrist. They never told us we had to. Um, we had the luxury to be able to choose our career paths. But I think when you see somebody who's so happy and passionate about exactly. what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, it's hard not to want to do the same thing. Yes. Right? Um, I knew I wanted to go into medical school. I can't say I always thought I'd be a psychiatrist. 
but again, you see it. You see the satisfaction of treating patients and on a daily basis. It's hard not to veer in that direction. And I think Harita felt the same way. I don't think she went in thinking this is what she was going to do. But we, we've been, I think both of us feel that we are happy being able to take care of patients and make a difference in people's lives in a way that is somewhat difficult sometimes for everybody to see. Yeah. Um, we, Harita, so Harita also is a psychiatrist in Bethesda. She founded uh, the Bethesda Women's Mental Health wow. Clinic. So she focuses on women's mental health issues and also sees a lot of patients with telemedicine. Wow. So another really great resource. So if our viewers or kisi no mental health ya depression, anxiety, koi bhi treatment di zarurat they can obviously reach you or even Dr. Harita Baksi, both. Uh, Raja, I keep messing up. <laughs> so how can our viewers find you? How can they find Harita, um, Dr. Raja? You know, how do they reach out? Yeah. So Harita's, um, she's on, she has a website, BethesdaWomensMentalHealth.com. Um, she's on Instagram. She's on Facebook, Harita Raja, um, also Bethesda Women's Mental Health Clinic. So she's available as am, as am I. You can also find me um, on Instagram if you need it to. Um, I'm also, you know, you can also contact me um, to set up appointments. But if you're looking for women's mental health, uh, yes. especially in the Washington, D.C. area, yes. um, Harita is the way to go. And of course, Google and, and et cetera, anyone can uh, find you. So it's, this is wonderful. Exactly. Um, exactly. We're always here, um, whether it's an appointment to answer questions, especially in our culture when people don't want to come in. Yeah. Um, reach out. We're happy to help in any way that we can. That's amazing. I think you um, also, you know, mentioned that the happiness. And I see a lot of doctors who are not happy, you know, they, they're like miserable in their profession. And I think you can relate to me that I also saw my dad very happy in his profession. And I, you know, they see doctor, but I doctor, but I like you're going to be a doctor, but what kind of doctor are you going to be a surgeon? Are you going to be an OB-GYN? What? Um, and I think, you know, I also feel the same way. I feel very lucky because I feel happy in what I do. I it's enjoy so it. important, right? Yeah, that's so important because we don't we sometimes forget that when we choose our career path, that it should be something that brings us joy as well. Right. And coming home after you've made an impact on people's lives, it's, it's a satisfying feeling for sure. It's definitely something that makes you feel good. How do you cope with the stress? Um, because our field can be very hard, you know? Um, you hear a lot of sadness. You hear a lot of grief sometimes. How do you cope personally with the stress? Like, what do you do to, you know, help yourself? So a lot of it, I mean, I, I enjoy exercising. I yes. enjoy doing yoga. I think that's helped me a lot. Um, but it's also a way of thinking, right? It's also keeping that positive energy and that positive mentality around you at all times. Absolutely. So even if, again, there are times we all get to that point of, you know, going down that negative spiral. Um, and I think that's, that's a time where you want to be conscientiously aware of how can I turn this around? How can I find the silver lining? Um, to something as bad as the pandemic, to something, you know, as simple yeah. as, you know, I, my TV show got canceled or whatever it might be, right? Right. So it, yeah. um, I think it's just maintaining that positivity that probably helps the most. Right. And I think um, definitely that's for sure. You know, I think seeing the, the positive in, in everything, you know, like due to the pandemic, we got to spend more time with our families, you know? We never yeah, we actually there. were just talking about that. Yeah, that like that we have a similar family structure, but we are so lucky. Yeah. We're so blessed that the silver lining of the pandemic brought us our families. Right. Like I, I spend a lot more time with my husband. He may or may not appreciate that, but I do. <laughs> um, my parents. I got to spend a lot of time with my parents and my in-laws. My sister, my Jiju, Aww. my brother, my future Bobby. Like, I would not have been able to spend all this time with them. That's and wonderful. probably the best part of the pandemic for me was I got to spend time with my niece, my nephew, Aww. my pup nephew. Like, we got to spend so much quality time together that we would never have gotten yeah. if they were in and out of school. 100%. Right? So, 100%. silver lining. Again, finding the positivity in as much as we can. Also, um, you know, you mentioned yoga, you mentioned exercise. I know your dad walks a lot because personally I know that. <laughs> and I know that you, you just mentioned yoga. And I have also, the last few months, I've been doing it very regularly. And I noticed, and I think uh, I want you to talk about this too um, to our viewers, is how, um, you know, 
people who are watching, you know, how important it is because exercise can help with so many things, right? Mental health, anxiety, with just feeling better. Tell me about your experience with that. I started yoga when I was in a not as great place in my life. And I'll tell you that th my outlook on life all of a sudden started getting better. I felt calmer. I felt more peaceful. Um, I was able to improve my concentration. I could focus on more things than I probably could have in the past. I felt better. My body, like I felt like exercise made a bigger impact on my body than before. Um, but I think I the feeling of calmness that you can get from yoga is unparalleled. Wow. There's no there's no amount of drinks, there's no amount of anything else that can really compare to that feeling, that energized feeling after a really good yoga class. What do you do? Where do you do yoga? Do you do it online? Do you go to classes? Where do you start? Yeah, so I, I, I did go to classes. I was um, part of a yoga membership. I had a yoga membership in a studio in Manhattan. Um, and then Pandemic hit, so that changed. Of course. Um, now I'm doing it online. There's plenty of YouTubes out there. Um, I do mine on Peloton, app, the Peloton app. Oh yeah. Um, but you can really do it anywhere, and and it's great. Like, and there's so many different layers, right? You can start at that basic level and do simple things, and then there's a little bit more complicated as you go. You know, a little as you get more experience, you feel better. About and I it. think for even for some of the elderly folks who have a difficult time, like doing rigorous exercise. I think yoga is a great way to start, right? Exactly. And like you said, my dad does, he likes to walk, um, but he also does some yoga in the morning. And it's a different type, like it's a different type of yoga, if you will, right? We're at different levels, but it's something that helps feel better. Um, you know, we all, I think everybody in my family does some element of it. We're not all at the same place and that's okay. It helps us in our own way. And I think that's the key to anything you do to improve your health, right? Right. You do what's best for you. You know, uh, Dr. Buxi, you're involved in so many things and you're doing so much. What does the future hold for you? Like, what are you passionate about, um, you know, professionally, personally? Like, tell us a little bit about you. Me, um, there's a lot more to come. I think the, the, the thing that I still enjoy most is taking care of patients. So I see that happening for a while. Um, I like the bigger pictures. So there's a lot of um, bigger mental health changes I think our society can make. So I, I really want to improve our advocacy and our outreach in our community. Um, and I also, I see, I think I, the passion in women's mental health, so um, it, I think is a really fundamental part of where I am right now. I really want to see us change the outlook for women because and you're doing so much with Appy too you know and then there's Appy yeah and a lot of this I think interlinks like I like the fact that yeah. I can do so much of this with not just my career but then also these additional things that I'm doing on the side like Appy yeah. you know Appy is a big part of who I am right now and I um I'm, I'm lucky that I am in this role and I'm getting to serve as you know the president of the young physician section I've got to meet amazing people um along the way and I think it's something that it has a lot of room for growth and growth as well. It's a complete honor to have you. And I'm sure our viewers feel the same way. Thank you so much for being on our show. You were amazing. And I know you're very, very busy. So taking this time out means so much to us. Um, we can't wait to, you know, hear more about you, learn more about you. And I'm sure my, you know, our viewers here are going to follow you. So thank you so much again, Dr. Ami Baxi. We will see you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.